I'm here with my favorite vintage computer. It's my IBM PS2 Model 25 286. The reason it's my favorite is because the very first computer I laid my hands on was one of these in kindergarten. We got a computer lab and they took us in there and let us mess around with them. It was mostly word processing as I remember. Uh, some little editor for kids and um, I haven't ever seen it again since but we also played some games with uh, fish I remember um, which fish would eat which other fish things like that but they took us in there and let us type on the keyboard and I remember being scared to death because I thought in order to type cat that I had to put my fingers on C, A, and T at the same time and my hands were little and I couldn't do it. But anyway, here is the little computer. I'm gonna go over a few things with it and mine's probably not like any others that anybody else has put together because uh, reasons and I'll show you those reasons here in a minute. I promised my wife that I would um, write her name with the paintbrush, so I'll go ahead and do that. And there you go. That's Beck's name written in uh, Paintbrush 3. Thanks, Drew. <laughs> and she just thanked me, so. This computer is actually running PC-DOS 5.0, and I found this at work. I work at a vocational school, and from time to time when we're cleaning stuff out, we run into the weirdest computer things that you can imagine. At least they're weird to everybody else, but they let me take everything home, because who cares, right? And it's fitting that it's PC-DOS instead of MS-DOS. One of the things that makes my PS2 Model 25 286 different than everybody else's is how I have this compact flashcard reader hooked up and it's nothing unique to really have a compact flashcard reader but you'll see in a minute that because of my pitiful soldering skills I had to make work what I could put together now I do have a better solution where you plug the compact flashcard right in the back of the computer but for this particular little machine I wanted to make sure to do all the soldering and everything myself so that's why you're gonna see this strange configuration once we crack it open I'm gonna fire up DOS shell here and you'll be able to see the compact flash card acting as a hard drive when the little green light flashes And the machine is actually faster this way than it would be with a native MFM hard drive, which I really have no interest in because those tend to uh, to break quite frequently. And with this, um, I can make backups of the compact flash card and swap them out till my heart's content and I don't have to worry. Alright, so now I've got it open. You can see the ribbon cable hanging out with the compact flash card reader and one thing I want you to notice is the power right here going into the compact flash reader and I'm going to remove the network card I have in here yes we do have network connectivity thanks to the MTCP package by Michael Bruntman but I'll get that removed and then we'll come back. Here is the magic that was hid under that network card. And I put this together myself. And I'll get it out of there and we can take a closer look at it. 
And this is an XT IDE CF card adapter from Low Tech. And I soldered it together myself because it actually just features a full size IDE connector right here. And basically, what you can do is hook a compact flash uh, card and adapter into this, which is what I did. So I ended up with two separate pieces. Uh, the CF IDE version 3 you only have to have the card and then plug a compact flash card into it. It gets its power from the board but this one my solution I needed power. Here's the thing that probably makes my IBM Model 25 PS2 fairly unique compared to everybody else's and that is how I tapped in to get the power uh, to this uh, compact flash adapter board because the way I've got it set up it needs 5 volts externally and there's not you know a uh, um, connector coming off the power supply or anything so what I did I took this extra floppy cable stick in here and tapped into it to get 5 volts and I believe it's pins 2 and 6 I tapped into but I'm going to verify that for you and put something on the screen to verify that's what I did. And I actually ordered a floppy drive extender cable and just chopped it off to get these two wires so that I could get the power. And it worked. It's not the prettiest thing in the world, but given my poor soldering skills, it's what I needed to do, so that's what I did. So now let me tape this back up so something doesn't short out one of these days. So at this point in the video, I discovered that I provided some boneheaded information that is summarily untrue. If you look at that NEC chip, I thought that was the CPU in this machine. And I honestly thought it was kind of strange that that would have been the CPU, but it's right next to the math coprocessor slot. Well, I looked up that number when I'm editing and that NEC chip is actually a floppy drive controller so I was very much wrong the actual CPU you can see here is the Intel unit the N80286-10 so yeah I was wrong we can also see the machine has a Dallas um, clock chip I've replaced it with this Dallas, when I got it, it was totally dead. So with these machines, if your CMOS doesn't work, and actually this isn't what you'd call a CMOS, but you, um, you can't uh, really do much with it between reboots because um, the way IBM did their BIOS at this point, it just wasn't very smart. This machine is actually outfitted with a Mega RAM, and that's what it had in it when I got it. It came out of a vocational school in Texas. I don't know anything more than that about it. But I tried to upgrade this thing because um, supposedly it can support 4 megs of RAM. However, the RAM it takes is pretty particular, so... Um, I did buy some RAM at one point to try it out, and it ended up being not successful. So for now, we have one meg of RAM, but that actually would have been awesome at the time this would have been used. Now I'm going to get the cards back in it that were in it when we started, 
This machine only has two ISA slots. They are 16-bit. Two ISA slots, though, on this riser card. So one disadvantage of having this type of adapter is it does take up one of my slots, but that'll be okay, I guess. So and what I'm going to do is plug in this IDE cable, and this is a 40-pin. I tried it with one of the newer... Um, 80 pin ones that came out because it was just something I had laying around and it did not work but this 40 pin IDE connector worked just fine so we plug that in there I did not unplug my power that was in this extra floppy drive slot so I don't have to worry about it so now that's all in place and then here's my network card and this is a 3Com Etherlink 3, also courtesy of the school that I work at. We found a whole box of these, and I only kept one because at the time I did not have an old machine. I really didn't realize that vintage computing was such a popular pastime, but now I do. So I'm kicking myself. There was an entire box, but this particular one works just fine. So I'll slot him back in here. Let's see, I got my cable in the way possible. There we go. Voila, cards are back in. So let's fire it back up and I'll show you some of the software that I have on it and we'll go from there. All right, now we're going to boot it up and you'll get to see it starting up and then we'll do a short software demonstration with some of the software I've got on here. It'll do a mem test of the Mega RAM that's on here or in here, I should say. Now you see that XTIDE, and there goes the network settings provided by the MTCP, and I think maybe my brightness, yeah my brightness got turned down, so there we go, that's a little better. And this is number munchers. I do have the frames per second turned down to 13 because it flickers pretty bad with this particular camera. The monitor on here has a really weird refresh rate that doesn't seem to agree with any of the settings on my camera. But uh, let's play a little bit of number munchers here. Let's do multiples. I'm going to run check it on this thing. And it does recognize that we have the 8286. So I'm not really sure where all these benchmarks stand in terms of other machines, but there you go. Now we're going to run top bench. See how it stacks up. <clears throat> and no surprise, it most closely matches an IBM PS2 Model 30 286. They're very similar. The Model 30 just didn't have the built-in monitor, but everything else was was pretty similar. Gonna fire up Word Perfect 5.1 because why not? Sorry. 
think I'm going to wrap it up here, guys. I have a lot more software to cover, but that'll come another day. I'm going to leave you now with a listing of every file and every directory on the machine. Have a good one. If you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. Also, subscribe to my channel. I have lots of vintage technology that I want to cover, and I'd like you to know about it. Thanks, and have a great day.